Hello everybody. I am here uh, preparing supper for us today or dinner as some people call it. Um, and we're going to make a simple parmesan meatloaf today. So I am just peeling the potatoes to get them in the pot because we're going to have some mashed potatoes and broccoli with our meatloaf today. And I haven't shared this meatloaf with you before, so I hope that it's something that you will enjoy. The ingredients, you probably have most of them in your pantry at home. And we will um, put on a delicious, simple meal for what's for dinner tonight. So I will meet you right back here after I have washed these potatoes and set them to the stove to come to a boil and gather up all the ingredients and we'll get ready to mix up this meat, meatloaf and get it into the oven. It doesn't take long to cook, so it's a pretty quick and simple dinner. I'll see you right back after this. back and I've got the rest of the ingredients that we need to make the meatloaf. I have um, just over a pound of hamburger in my glass bowl and to that I'm going to add a half a cup of parmesan cheese that I've grated so it's fresh. It's not the powdery stuff from out of the box although you could definitely use that. It's entirely up to you. I'm going to add to that two eggs and this is, you know, meatloafs are a pretty, pretty standard thing. I think all the ingredients are things that you would know about anyway. I'm going to mince up, I'm going to reach my big knife, and I'm going to mince up a couple of cloves of garlic. That one needed a little cleaning up. Maybe that one does too. And we're in that season when we want homey dishes, things that uh, make us feel good. And this is one of those dishes. Meatloaf always seems to fill the bill there. Makes us, uh, takes us back to times gone by for sure. I mean, during the war years, of course, there isn't really any of us that remember the war years anymore. Um, because the war was over 10 years before I was born, but it took the country, it took people a long time to recover from that big event. So they uh, had some pretty like, lean times after the war trying to pay it off. And so meat was pretty much a pretty dear, let's say it was pretty dear and not a lot of families could afford to have extravagant meals, so um, ground beef was the meal of choice for a lot of families, and um, mine was no different than that. So I've got a small onion. This one I grew in my garden outside. The onions did quite well this year. I think the only thing that didn't do really well in the garden this year maybe was some of my herbs didn't do really well. I think it got too hot too fast for them and they just didn't enjoy that at all. But other than that, everything seemed to do really well, which I'm grateful for, for sure. So we've uh, made some pickles and canned some things and we have a drawer full of, oof, that's going to be a powerful onion. We have a drawer full of carrots still that we're using as fresh carrots. And we're excited about that. I should have grated this. I guess you don't have to grate it. Um, it's certainly easier on the eyes when you don't grate it. But it uh, definitely blends into the meat easier when it's been grated. So now I'm going to go to work. Oh. I'm going to go to work and I'm going to mix this up. And 
get it ready to go in there. I hope that everybody's well wherever you are. Um, it's scary watching the news these days, but I do try to look at it at least once a week just to find out how everything's going in the world. I'd like to kind of know where all of you, my peeps, where what's going on where you might live and kind of keep track of you. And it's not a simple thing for sure. You're definitely tuning in from all over the world and I really appreciate that, of course. I do love it when you say where you're from and the different corners of the world. And of course, um, our YouTube analytics um, tell me where everybody tunes in from. So it's pretty cool to see the channel catch on in waves around the world where they're being viewed from. That's pretty awesome. So I don't think I'm going to need that again. So I'll set that aside. I'll get rid of this and this. Hmm. We're down to the basics now. So we need some herbs in here to bring some flavor to this dish. So we're going to have a half a teaspoon of basil. Now these are all measurements in the half, so they shouldn't be too difficult. And as always, my recipes will be in the description box below or a link to where I found a recipe uh, would be in the link below. And that was half a teaspoon of oregano, half a teaspoon of basil, and this is half a teaspoon of thyme. You might notice I was being quite generous there. And I'm going to do half a teaspoon of salt. And I'm going to do a quarter of a teaspoon of pepper. There we go. I know I've said it before, but I think pepper is a very underrated ingredient. Now, I'm just using pre-bottled uh, tomato and pesto. Basically, it's a spaghetti sauce. You could use whatever kind you have on hand. If you're like me, you probably should check the fridge first because you've probably got one open in there that you should be using up. And now I will have. And then last for this recipe, but certainly not least, is a quarter of a cup of breadcrumbs. I'm just using plain, but you could use the Italian ones or, yeah, the Italian ones that go good when you think about the flavors that we've got going in here with the basil, oregano, and thyme, then the Italian seasoned ones would be good. Now I'm just going to get the bread pan, get it greased, and we'll get this mixed up and into the pan. Now I've just sprayed my pan with a little bit of um, pan seasoning, or, but you could use whatever kind you like. I'm just going to give my hands a scrub because I'm going in with my bare hands and uh, if you feel icky, about mixing meat with your bare hands, then by all means put on a pair of gloves, but I don't mind. So I'm just going to wash my hands and turn back to this. Now I'm just going to mix this all up. And you don't want to over mix meatloaf the same way you don't want to over mix meatballs because it makes them tough when you do that. But you do want it well mixed. And it's starting to come together really well. So it's only taken me about, I don't know, 30 seconds to mix it pretty well. I'm just going to fold the last little bits in. There we go. Now I'm going to move the pan over here. We're going to tip this in. Get rid of that. And I am just going to pat this down into the pan, try and keep it pretty level and I'm going to flatten it out so that it's um, going to cook at the same rate. It's going to add a little cheese to the top. I've got some grated and I'm going to put some uh, 
melted melty cheese on top. So let me wash my hands and uh, again, and I'll be right back. I had a little leftover when I grated the uh, Parmesan cheese earlier, so I'm just going to sprinkle that on the top, but it wasn't very much. And that's okay, because now I'm going to add a little mozzarella to the top of this. Probably about a half a cup. And if you had more grated Parmesan, you could certainly add it all, where you want a total of about a half a cup to go on the top. Or a little more. If you'd like it cheesier, add a little more. And this is going to go into a preheated 350 degree oven. And it's going to take between 35 and 45 minutes to cook. Or until you're in your... If you use a meat thermometer, which I highly recommend, it needs to be about 160. Now, I think I got my meat thermometer. It's just a cheap little meat thermometer I bought at the dollar store. And I got it for around $2. So it's uh, something that I use all the time and every now and then they'll rust through so I throw them out and buy a new one. Um, and for two bucks, I don't mind doing that. They seem to always do the trick. And I find that my cooking time on my meat is a lot more accurate um, when I use a meat thermometer. And you can um, guess all you want, but you don't truly know unless you're doing this. So don't be afraid to invest in a meat thermometer, even a cheap one. So when you think that it might be cooked enough, put in your meat thermometer, watch it climb. If it goes to 160, you know you're in the safe zone and that it's cooked completely through. So again, that's a 350 degree oven, 35 to 40 minutes. And while that's in the oven cooking, I'm gonna turn on the potatoes and get them boiling and get my broccoli cleaned and into the pot to steam. So I will see you back here as soon as I start on the broccoli. So this is the last step in making dinner. I'm just going to um, cut some broccoli from the stalk and these broccoli heads were cut really short and the bottoms don't look very good so uh, this one in particular I'm not going to save but uh, definitely the stems of broccoli are definitely good to eat if you get a good stem. See this one's not very good either. And maybe that's why they kept cutting it off till it was really short, is because there is something wrong inside there. So I'm going to pay close attention here. I've taken this straight out of the bag, so I'm definitely going to give it a good wash. And uh, broccoli happens to be a favorite vegetable around our house. And. Um, it's also so good for us. I know that you all know that for sure. And I'd be interested to know, you can leave me a message in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite vegetable happens to be. And do you buy it raw or, sorry, do you buy it uncooked or do you buy it uh, frozen or canned because I'm kind of I have certain vegetables that I really enjoy frozen better than canned um, of course I enjoy them all fresh better than anything but if you had to have them some way other than um, fresh how would you prefer them to be canned or frozen that should almost be a poll um, I guess it depends a lot on the vegetable but I'm gonna leave that up to you to let me know that so I'm going to get these into the steamer pot. I'll have already have water in the bottom of the pot and this is a steamer. So I'm going to throw them in here and then I'm going to rinse them in the sink before I put them back on the pot. All my prep is done for dinner and I just have to clean up this little mess that I made. And then when dinner's all ready, I'll bring you back so that you can see what this dinner looks like. And I always try to do things in real time, but I can't account for the cooking time on this right now. 
So um, this is definitely, you can prepare this entire dinner in about 15 minutes and then it's just cooking time after that. So um, I think this is a pretty fast and easy and reasonably healthy dinner. So I will see you back here when it's ready to hit the plate. So I have taken the meatloaf from the oven and mashed the potatoes, steamed up the vegetables, and this is what my plate looks like. I have added a pat of butter to my mashed potatoes. And I hope that you can see that the meatloaf is really juicy looking. I brought it to 160 on my thermometer and my uh, vegetables are nice and tender but still crisp which is how I like to eat them and folks this is what's for dinner tonight at our house parmesan meatloaf and I hope that you give it a try if you like it as much as we do please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already give it a like or a thumbs up and share this recipe with your friends because I'm sure that they will enjoy it as well and as always, I'm happy to hear from you in the comments in, in below. And the recipe will also be down below in the description box for you to be able to add to your list of recipes that you use regularly. Until next time, folks, I hope that you all stay well. And I will see you again on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.